Welcome to my commissioner in a car, but actually commissioner in a hotel room. <laughs> uh, that's because I'm in D.C. again, uh, and uh, I... Uh, I uh, wanted to do this quick update. I was actually hoping to do this from the airport um, on my flight or waiting for my flight back, but uh, that did not happen because my flight got canceled. Uh, I understand there's some weather going on up there in my lovely hometown in Syracuse, New York. It's actually pretty rainy here. You can see I'm a, I'm a little disheveled because I walked in the rain uh, as well. But um, uh, but I wanted to do this commissioner in a car and do a quick wrap up of what I've been doing down in D.C. the last couple of uh, uh, couple of days. Actually, I was also here on Friday, and uh, I know that I did a lot of posting about what I did on Friday, but just to wrap up, if you didn't see that, on Friday I had the incredible honor of being part of two different uh, January 6th uh, commemorations, one on Friday in D.C. and one on Saturday in, uh, in um, the... In Syracuse, but I actually traveled to D.C. Thursday night, drove down with my good friend Jonah Zern, uh, and uh, we, he got me, um, asked me to be part of an incredible press conference remembering the third anniversary of the January 6th commission with Jamie Raskin. Congressman Jamie Raskin was one of the headliners talking along with uh, Congresswoman uh, Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton and uh, Congressman Glenn Fry. Um, and uh, former Ithaca Mayor Savante Merrick, uh, Lisa Gilbert from Public Citizen, myself, and uh, way too many people to um, uh, to to remember <laughs> this late at night with my frazzled brain. But uh, it was an incredible, incredible honor. Oh, and Sergeant uh, Golem, which was the the main speaker. Sergeant Golem was the uh, one of the Capitol Police that defended our Capitol three years ago. And he had some incredibly brave and uh, poignant words about what he went through, what he's still going through, the injuries he suffered from the in insurrection and, uh, and, and how he, he was an immigrant to this country, legal immigrant, and um, is now uh, and was honored to defend the Capitol, but now is not able to do his job anymore because of the injuries he suffered. And he's writing a book. I plan on ordering it. I hope you do, too, because uh, he's an American hero. But I was able to speak. I, I spoke about how uh, I took my opportunity to speak to talk about election officials across the country uh, leaving the field because of the harassment that they've uh, received since the insurrection and before, even before, and about how uh, the big lie is ongoing with uh, suppressive voting laws across the country and uh, limited budgets to boards of elections to do the job in 2024. So, um, and, I, and that clip is on one of my reels here on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter. Uh, so check it out. Um, and um, uh, I was really proud of that moment. Um, and standing in front of the Capitol with people behind me that are literally heroes of mine, uh, and just little old Dustin <laughs> there, try, not little, I guess, but uh, Dustin there just trying to figure out, uh, you know, the right words to say. And I I, I, I thought it was a, a, a great moment. But I came back to, D, to Syracuse on, uh, on, on Saturday to do an, a few more minutes uh, a little bit more time to speak at the Syracuse Remembrance uh, held at the Federal Building. And about 50 to 70 people were there. Uh, an incredible turnout for that as well. Again, that clip is online on my uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram feed, so go check that out. I, I, I was honored to speak there. I'd speak, spoken there every year, uh, and uh, it, it, this was the best attended uh, Remembrance as we're going into the 2024 election, I think. Uh, it also happened to fall on a Saturday, which makes it easier for people to, to attend. But the main reason of this podcast, several minutes in, um, that uh, I'm, I, I wanted to bring this to you is that I am uh, uh, here in D.C. this last two days as a member of the Local Leadership Council for the Election Assistance Commission. The Elections Assistance Commission is a federal uh, commission uh, that is uh, has that is charged with assisting voters, assisting uh, election workers, assisting poll workers uh, throughout the nation and providing resources and uh, a ton of other uh, things that uh, makes it easier 
for people to run elections. And uh, I, last year, actually in 2021, I, um, the local leadership council is a now new federal commission, which is made up of two representatives from each state uh, of election, lead election officials uh, to come together and game uh, out uh, different scenarios to, uh, um, you know, and, and also help share resources and knowledge and also provide testimony to the EAC about the resources we need. Uh, it's a bipartisan group. There's one Democrat, one Republican from each state. Uh, I happen to be the Democrat from New York, uh, Eric Height. Uh, the Duchess uh, Republican commissioner is the Republican. And uh, you may remember Eric, he was also the Republican caucus chair. Um, and that's why he was chosen to be on the commission. But he's staying on the commission. He's not no longer the caucus chair. He decided to give up that role. But he's still on the EAC, which I'm very glad for because, you know, we're good friends and we have different ideologies, but that's the whole point. Uh, but at the end of the day, we just want to serve the voters. Um, and uh, so we're here. We uh, had two days of conference. Uh, my plan was to fly in on Monday morning and fly home on Tuesday evening. Uh, but now I'll be flying home on Wednesday morning. <laughs> um, and on, on those uh, conferences, we had several different exercises. The first day, um, we broke up into our regions. We're in the Northeast region, and the Northeast region is uh, um, uh, covers uh, you know, pretty much the Northeast of the, the United States. And, and we sat down with peers from Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, and Rhode Island uh, was represented, and of course New York. And we sat down for a few hours to talk about strategies for dealing with the challenges that are coming in 2024. And it was important to sit down in these regions because, you know, different regions have different things. You know, in the Northeast, we have to worry about weather, especially for spring primaries. And and uh, we have uh, different ways of doing our elections in the terms of, um, you know, bipartisan election officials versus elected uh, clerks, that kind of thing. So it, w it was good to split up into that region. Uh, we had, of course, messages from our EAC commissioners about, you know, the importance of the LLC. It's important to remember that this LLC, the, the Local Leadership Council, is uh, the first um, uh, discretionary committee that the EAC put together. And that means that it doesn't have to do it, but it wants to do it. There's a three commissions that the EAC must uh, do, and this is the fourth, which is uh, the Local Leadership Council, and this is something that the commissioners fought for and got uh, funding for uh, to fly all of us down. Uh, this is not money that is coming out of our county budget. I want to make sure everybody understands that. This is money that is uh, the federal taxpayers is, is built into the federal budget. And, uh, and it's important that the federal budget, you know, has these resources to bring all of these election officials together to share uh, stories and uh, and resources. The, the second day of the conference today was jam-packed. Um, in the morning, we had uh, uh, the uh, we had uh, a, a tabletop sessions on continuing operations, uh, what to do in case of an emergency, how to plan for that, how to do what's called a continuing of operations plan, a coop. Uh, I learned a lot. I, I, I'm planning on bringing up back a lot of that to my board and to the other uh, commissioners um, that uh, that are out there. Um, so, uh, you know, that was that we, we did a tabletop exercise working with other uh, commissioners uh, to go through scenarios. Uh, we then had a working lunch uh, where. We met with the uh, United States Postal Service inspector, uh, one, uh, uh, um, one of the inspector services for the USPS, and also uh, the CISA director, uh, who happens to be from Plattsburgh, or I'm sorry, Poughkeepsie, uh, one of the uh, New York native. Uh, they gave us uh, information on how to work with them to better secure our office, uh, to better to work with, in case of threats, uh, which is obviously a big thing. Uh, the Postal Service Inspector, um, Brendan Donahue, that met with us, he was great. Um, he talked a lot about all the different procedures that they do to try to track mail ballots, but also protect us 
as uh, election commissioners and board of elections, uh, our physical addresses from mail fraud and some of these other things. So it's a, uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot of stuff that the federal government already does that I'm not going to necessarily share uh, because I, that's stuff that they do to protect us. And I don't want to get that out there on the internet, but uh, I feel much better that the things that they have put together to protect boards of elections throughout the country. Um, and then after lunch, we had, uh, a couple of breakout sessions uh, on a uh, what's called the uh, clearinghouse uh, for the EAC. The clearinghouse is uh, where they uh, store a lot of documents and uh, informational materials for uh, boards of elections, uh, but also there's a thing called a round table, which is a basically a bulletin board service that uh, Boards, LLC members can uh, post uh, information on and get ask questions throughout the year and hear from some of the most important and intelligent election minds in our country, which is an amazing service for us. Um, and uh, well, then I was supposed to come home. That was the end. That was all of today. I was supposed to come home today, but uh, didn't happen. That's okay. Uh, one more night, and then I'll be home tomorrow morning, Syracuse. Don't worry, I'll be there. Um, but, uh, uh, and, uh, and we're still, I'm jumping right into, you know, work this week. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and then next week is my state convention. I'll be in Albany next week. Uh, and so my commissioner in a car probably won't be in a car again, might be on a train. Uh, so, uh, wait and see on that, um, as I go to Albany, uh, for our statewide convention, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, next week as well. So that's all I got for you this week. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm a little tired, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, uh, I'm hoping that uh, tomorrow night uh, or, to or Thursday I or Friday I will have a uh, uh, a a Zoom with Zarni. Although uh, my schedule, being what it is, has been. Uh, a little hard to book a guest on that, so I'm hoping to have a Zoom with Zarni with uh, Susan Lerner of Common Cause. Um, and uh, uh, then I also hope to uh, uh, have a weekly walk this weekend before uh, it, I promised this a couple weeks in a row, but it doesn't look like I get to it this weekend. But maybe this next weekend I'll get to uh, looking back at my website, DustinZarni.com, some stats from there as we are waiting the... Uh, the the numbers for for the races that are going on this year, I plan on doing some uh, comparisons on the congressional district when they change. They did change the assembly districts from last year, so uh, I I might do that. But I, I'm, what I'm waiting for is February 21st is when the state does uh, enrollment numbers, and when I get those enrollment numbers, I can really start comparing apples to apples on some of these uh, political subdivisions for my weekly wonks. And so, but I might do some, uh, some opinion pieces in the meantime. Uh, so check that out. Uh, go to DustinZarney.com, subscribe. You can uh, get everything for free, always free and always uh, a, uh, uh, something that I pay for myself. No ads, no outside money. It's uh, part of my educational outreach for Onondaga County and New York State. So take care. And uh, thank you so much for listening to this journey with me. And I'm looking forward to the 2024 election. Bye-bye.